you want to make sure it doesn't fail. Right. That means that if you lose power, you don't turn off the computer. So they have UPS, which is battery systems, uninter uninterruptible power supplies, that make sure the power continues even if the power turns off for right. the utility. And then you have generators, <clears throat> which are great big engines um, that right, are running and creating power over time. If you're losing power like they did in, in Hurricane Sandy mm -hmm. for days on end, there's generators right, mm -hmm. creating power to keep the, the systems up. Mm -hmm. um, so the traditional way that people design is generators and UPS, many of them, and so the backup of this backup of a backup. Right. Lots of redundancy to make sure it doesn't go down. We've challenged that. And we said that we um, have done this the same way for the last 35 years. Do we really need to do it that way? There's new technologies and new innovations coming out. How do we apply these within a data center environment? And usually it's data center owners and operators and designers and all that really don't like to take risk because right. risk is pretty pretty impactful if you do it wrong. Yeah. And, but for our side, we, we, um, we want to see what we can do differently for eBay. Mm -hmm. And so we said, do we really have to have generators in UPS? They're used for less than 1% of the year. Right. Only in failure situations. So I spend millions and millions of dollars on this stuff to only use it for less than 1% of the year. Really inefficient. Right. And it does fail. Because you right. know, with all the testing, and things, the, the it's never perfect. The back right. And even those fail at times. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at East Coast. The New York Stock Exchange shut down. So how about the fuel cells themselves? What is their reliability, resiliency? That's what we found in all this, is we started challenging the conventional wisdom of how they, they build data centers and said, what happens if you replace those with fuel cells? They realized, my engineers and the teams, as they went through it, that a fuel cell is a distributed box, meaning that there's a 25-watt fuel cell that goes into a stack of 2,000 right, watts, mm -hmm. which goes into 40-kilowatt stacks, mm -hmm. which goes into five of those, creating 200 kilowatts. So it's almost like the same kind of architectural principles behind um, the large data center, behind the cloud, behind the virtualization yeah. and the redundancy that's built into that distributed architecture mm -hmm. is, being is being replicated for the energy solution of the data center. And the difference in this is, with that one, that by doing this on site and replacing those components, if I have failures within the, the fuel cells, um, I just lose capacity. Right. I don't lose the system. It's also generating power 24-7, 365. So it's I'm serious. always consumed, right? Generating, mm. always consuming. And it's self-storing, right? I mean, yeah. it it's, is... Well, it's immediately generated, and then either you consume it or it goes back on the grid. But we okay. have one more element. We have a microgrid on our site. So you can consume it elsewhere in your own ecosystem. We have a data center that's Tier 4, and we're building a Tier 2 right next to it. We're putting fuel cells on those. It won't be full of, of consumption day one. The power from the fuel cells flows backwards into the current site. Now this is what's important to me, why I take such a personal interest in this, is that that design and that approach is negating 13% of the carbon footprint for eBay. Like that. By July next year, this will negate the carbon footprint in Utah. Utah is 94% coal in the power that's actually sourced on into our facilities. A good place to negate the effects. So now we have the ability to do on-site generation, consume mm -hmm. it 100 feet away from where it's generated. So losses and everything else mm -hmm. usually happen, not mm -hmm. there. It's extremely efficient of what it takes from the mm -hmm. natural gas to create electricity. Mm -hmm. it, it, it all just snaps together. And it frees you to locate wherever you need to, which is probably many locations, geographically, because you don't, because the, 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 the local supply of power is not any more a factor because you've taken that into your own hands. And the fuel cell, I mean the natural gas lines, are like 50 times more resilient than the electrical lines. Okay. And why so is that? Just the way that they're designed. The, the way, way the distributed uh, nature of the, of the natural gas is. Mm. The abundance of it. Mm -hmm. right? We're at a 20 year low in mm -hmm. cost. And if you think about what happened on the East Coast, mm -hmm. Hurricane Sandy, Mm -hmm. knocked out the utility grid, right? Mm -hmm. Natural gas lines were virtually unaffected. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had natural gas mm -hmm. fueling a lot of these data centers and other locations today, they would have power. Now, if, just to be devil's advocate, if the, if a natural gas line did break, though, yeah. then, we're, then we're talking about kind of another level of physical disaster that could happen. Right. But well, what goes into people's mind is San Bruno, right? right. The explosion of that. Exactly. When you think about that pipeline, that was a 24-inch main line, high compressed, right, natural gas. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the natural gas consumed in a data center, even in the, the megawatt range, mm -hmm. it's very small. 
Okay. So even with a complete breach, you would not have anything like mm -hmm. what's going on in, in San Bruno. So it's the same fuel, but it's a different animal. It's a different configuration. It's, it's distributed out there because, you know, you're talking thousands of megawatts, mm -hmm. right? Worth of generation with huge uh, feeds like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the other thing is, if you think about the natural disasters that happen mm -hmm. in both the, the Loma Prieta and the earthquakes down in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, the natural gas lines were not disrupted. Again. Even during the earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So you think about that, suddenly it's a more resilient yeah. source of power. And so now we have a way to actually take that and actually create power on site. And it, it lines up with our corporate, our corporate goals. We want to lower our carbon footprint. We want to balance our costs. And we want to just continue to grow 